<laughs> Hi, thanks for joining. We're just going to give it a few minutes, not a few minutes, a few moments um, to let people have time to log on and join the live Shop the Closet. So thanks for joining today. Sandy is, okay, Sandy is behind the camera once again. I don't know if she's going to flip it around and let you see her, but she is here helping me. Thank you so much, Sandy, for joining us. Anytime. Today. Sure. We're going to talk pearls today, everyone. So just like I said, we're going to just take a few moments as people start logging on because it's a little bit before noon. And let's see, what are we going to talk about? We're going to, I'm going to share with you some information about pearls. I've been working with pearls forever. They're, they're one of my favorite materials. You know, I love colored gemstones, but I really love pearls. So I'm going to share how to value pearls today. And also, if you want some uh, care tips, how to take care of your pearls. If you have questions, please, please, please type them in. Um, go ahead and send them now so I can make sure I answer them because I want to answer all your pearl questions that you have. And if for some reason I don't know the answer, I promise to look it up and get back to you with the answer. So pearls today, I'm going to be um, showing you my collection of pearls. I try to show you everything I have, but also we've got pearls on the website. Um, you can go to my website, you can click on the homepage, that picture of beautiful Ursula in that double strand of white Keshi pearls. Um, that'll take you right to the pearl collection, or you can just go to collections and find the pearls there. You can search pearls. Really easy to find what you want on my website. So go ahead and do that. And also, we're going to be giving away a pair of Baroque pearl earrings. Sandy, do you want to just kind of zoom over? Let's talk about these pearls. These are beautifully iridescent Baroque pearls. They're a natural peach and gold and... Um, taupe color pearl. They really are gorgeous. I topped them off with a Swarovski crystal and then these beautiful silver plate and uh, cubic zirconia ear wires. This is just, they're simple, elegant, uh, and you can wear them all the time and they have just some nice sparkle. So these, I'm going to be giving them away. Um, if you've joined today, then you're eligible for the free earrings. And what I need you to do though, so that I can find you, is I need your email address. So if you would either message me, please don't, please don't type it in right here in the questions because we may miss that and I don't see it after the video is over. So either message me on Instagram, Facebook. If you've got my email address, you can send it there. You can sign up on my website for my newsletter. I'll get all your information. And also, or you can set up an account on my website. However you want to do it, just make sure I have your email address before the end of the day because I am going to pick a winner from everyone who's joined today. Sandy, how are we doing? Should we get started or should we wait just a few more moments? Just a few more moments. Okay, let's yeah. see if we get anyone else joining in. While, while we're talking, I'm just going to show you, these are a couple brand new pieces I just made. I mean, literally yesterday finished, um, actually this one over here, but they're very similar. I don't know if you can see the difference in them though. I like mixing metals, so we mixed up the oxidized silver and gold plate with these gorgeous Baroque pearls and a little tiny Amazonite bead just to bring in a different color. And then on this one, it's just pure uh, matte gold, oxidized silver, and then these wonderful, wonderful pearls. So hey, whoever wins the necklace or the earrings, you may want a necklace to go with it and that I have for you. So this, this is actually part of my new layering collection for fall, which, uh, well, let me go ahead and show you while we're waiting. I think I may have shown you this piece uh, in our last shopping, because somebody asked me about it. But this, this is gorgeous. This has a removable uh, Keshi pearl, which is similar. Look at the colors. Look how great that looks with the earrings. So that would be a great piece to have. And then the beauty of this necklace is then you can buy different pendants and clip it on and have whole different looks. Wonderful for traveling. And then I recreated a piece that a good friend um, purchased from me. But I changed it up just a little bit because I, I like to make everything one of a kind. But this has a vintage uh, brass stamping, which is very Art Deco with the Keshi Pearl. It's got Labradorite, it's got freshwater pearls throughout and beautiful matte gold. It's a long piece. I just am in love with this. I mean, look, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it on over. It doesn't really go with what I'm wearing, but See how pretty that is? It's a really nice look. And with a lariat, you can move this up and down however you like. So that's just a couple pieces in my new layering collection. 
The rest will be shown at some other time. Coming to a store near you, right? Okay. Let's, let's go ahead and get started, really. Let me just tell you, um, so we know we're giving away a free pair of earrings today. I need an email address, so be sure and get that to me. Um, my pearl collection will be on special for today until midnight, 20% off. And this time, you don't even have to enter a promo code. I have created a, in my website, so you just put the uh, pearls, the items you want, in your cart. And when you check out, the 20% will come off. So that's good till midnight, though. So once, you know, once the clock strikes 12, it's over. So you might want to go take a look and see if there's anything that you just have to have. And let's see, what else do I want to tell you? Um, I think I told you everything. Let's start talking about pearls and what we need to know about pearls. Sandy's going to follow me over here. And I wanted to talk about um, a lot of questions I get with uh, my customers is, how do you know if it's a good pearl or not? How do I know if the price I'm paying for the pearls is really what I should be paying or if it's too expensive? So, okay, and okay, how you value pearls. And there are five different things that we look at. They're called the five virtues when you're talking about pearls. And the first one you're all probably aware is luster. And luster is just, well, it's luster. <laughs> it's, it's, that, it's that glow is what it is. And luster is created by the, um, the nacre that forms the pearl. So here's what happens. You know this, you learned this in science class. Uh, something comes inside the mollusk, a little irritant. We always thought it was a piece of sand, but really it's probably a piece of shell or even some food that gets inside and they can't, di they can't get it out. And so the pearl or the mollusk forms a pearl sac around that to protect itself from injury. And then it starts creating this stuff called nacre and it creates a film around and around and around that pearl sac. And it just keeps growing and growing and growing until that pearl is finally removed. And it's lined up the way it, the way it forms, almost like a brick wall. So you'll have pieces like this on top of each other. And what that does is that allows sun and light to actually not just bounce off the pearl, reflect, but it also refracts. The light actually gets inside of the pearl and refracts back out to you and that creates the luster. So the more tiny, tiny layers of nacre you have in a pearl, the more luster you have. And you can imagine that the longer, the more nacre you have takes longer. So the more valuable pearls have taken much longer to create and that's, and they've got much more luster. Sandy, do you mind just, if we come over here, I just want to show you these beautiful Baroque pearls and the luster on these. And you guys let me know, both of these, well these are actually Kishi pearls or Keshi pearls that have gorgeous luster right here. And they're huge, by the way. <laughs> they're huge. <laughs> <laughs> but also these Baroque pearls behind them have beautiful glow and luster. And you can see that. One thing that um, can be difficult when you're buying pearls though is, is sometimes it's hard to tell if what you're looking at is the best quality, unless you're comparing it with something that's not the best quality. And um, you might ask when you're buying pearls, if you're at a store, to compare them with the other pearls that they have. But you can see, look at the luster. It's kind of a shine that comes off those pearls. Absolutely gorgeous. So the more luster on a pearl, the more valuable the pearl is. So there you go. You'll I have, see. Yes, I have the, a question, Carol. Yeah. So what about the weight of the of any of these pearls? How, what's they, what do they feel like when you're wearing them? Well, you know, it depends on how many, <laughs> how many you have. <laughs> this strand, I mean, it's very light. It looks, okay, so what we say, when it's, it's a lot of look, but it's not very heavy at all. So, oh, that's beautiful. You know, when I, when I create my pieces, I, I always put them on myself because I don't like heavy jewelry. And uh, most of the time, and I tell people, if something's a little bit heavy for me, I, I tell them before they buy it because yeah. I know that a lot of people don't like heavy things around their necks. So most of the pearls, even though they look big and chunky, these Baroque pearls, I mean, they're gorgeous, they're huge, but they're not very heavy at all. They're really, yeah, they're really beautiful. So it is something to think about, though, when you're buying jewelry, is how heavy do you want that to be around your neck? I just yeah. noticed how different the colors looked in this last necklace that you picked up yeah. when you put it up against your navy dress. Oh, this one? Oh, this one, okay. Mm -hmm. So there's something else I wasn't going to talk about till later, but Sandy's kind of brought up a point. There's something in pearls called orient, which we would typically call iridescence. And orient is just that. It's that um, the different colors that you'll get 
off of some pearls. And if you look at these cashew pearls again, I don't know, Sandy, if you can get these. These pearls have a lot of orient. You're seeing blue and green and pink and purple, depending on uh, where the light's at. I don't know if you can see that. Let me know, guys, if you can see the difference. Um, these, these pearls have a huge amount of orient, which to me makes them even more interesting. I like any stone or pearl that's got some iridescence in it that changes colors as, as you move. To me, it makes it more alive. And so I do look for that in my pearls. Shirley gave you a thumbs up on that Thank one. Thank you, Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. So, okay, so we talked about luster. You know luster is important. Next thing, the way of valuing pearls is to look at the skin surface. Obviously, if it's perfectly smooth, it's more valuable than if it's really rough. And Sandy, I'm going to ask you. <laughs> I'm going to swing here. I'm going to scoot over here. While you're scooting, can you remind uh, everyone yes. how they could win a pair of your earrings? Oh, yes, of course. So while Sandy is moving over to these uh, four pearls here to show you skin surface, and you can certainly tell which, pe which pearls are more valuable here, um, just a reminder, I, um, send me your email address because we're going, to, we're going to draw a name of everyone who attended today. And we're, we are going to give away a free pair of pearl earrings. And they're really gorgeous uh, Baroque pearls. You can see that on my Instagram page. Uh, so please, I need your email address. You can message me. Um, you can sign up on my website for my newsletter. However you want to get it to me, just make sure I have it. Just don't type it in here because we may not be able to capture it. So any questions about surface? I think it's pretty clear. Uh, if it's very rough and has holes in it and pock marks, they're not they're as valuable as say a perfectly smooth pearl. So if you're looking at two strands of pearls um, and they're the same size and shape and everything, if luster is, um, you look at luster and you look at skin surface and the smoother and the more lustrous are more valuable. Okay, third thing you look at is size. So as I mentioned when I first started, a very tiny pearl doesn't take as long to form as a huge you know, broke pearl. So the bigger the pearl, the more valuable it is. And that's if everything else is equal. Okay, so can you have a tiny, tiny pearl that's more valuable than a really big one? Absolutely, because that big one can have no luster and it can have all sorts of marks and, and uh, lines and things through it. And the tiny pearl can be perfectly smooth and round. So you can have a more valuable pearl that's smaller. You just have to compare all five of the virtues. So size is important. We know size is important. <laughs> Um, shape. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in. Um, shape too. There's so many shapes of pearls. Naturally, you'll find uh, round pearls, oval pearls, um, pearls that are smaller at the top, pearls that are smaller, um, that are more oval horizontally. You've got uh, the Baroque pearls, which happen to be my favorite. I love Baroque pearls. I don't know, Sandy, if you can do a little close up. This pearl right here is a Baroque pearl in the middle. And Usually the, the more organic shapes are the more popular, like that white strand I was showing you a little bit earlier. But basically, any pearl that's not round is Baroque, but the Baroque pearls we're used to seeing and have become so popular are, are like this here. Let me, let me see if I can show you. Here's some other Baroque pearls. I'm gonna lay down next to those. Aren't those pretty? These are the peacock colored Baroque pearls. Just, I think they're very aptly named as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's my name, actually. I don't know if everybody calls them that, but I certainly do. And then, excuse me, I've got these gorgeous silver. Look at the, um, the orient on that one. Silver, kind of gray silver Baroque pearls, super smooth. And, and if you want to look at, here's a good example of value. I mean, these are really beautiful as well, but they're, uh, they're rough. They're a different type of pearl. Baroque pearl, but the smoothness of this and the luster and the orient uh, make these pearls much more valuable than these would be if you were buying them separately. I like to put them together. I like mixing the rough and the smooth and um, just showing something really different. So that's, we were talking about shape and Baroque pearls. Baroque pearls are very popular right now and I use them as much as possible. The other shape um, I, I mentioned earlier and you've seen it, this Keshi pearl. You can say kishi, you can say keshi, tomato, tomato, it doesn't matter. Everybody's going to know what you're talking about. Sometimes they're called cornflake pearls because they look like cornflakes. And um, anyway, the, the difference of the keshi pearl with all the other pearls is 
all the other pearls have a nucleus. They have something, some irritant that was uh, inside the mollusk that made, made them form the pearl. The Keshi pearl is a byproduct of pearl production. It's just nacre. So it's pure luster all the way through and they form in such odd shapes and they come in all different sizes. Um, and this is that, sorry, I have that on. That's getting in the way. This by the way is a removable tassel, which I love. You can put that on your purse if you want. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the lariat and you know, you can, you can adjust it. I like it a little bit like that. So you're getting it, uh, you get to see all the pearls and they're not banging each other. This is a really, really beautiful piece, isn't it? This is la all labradorite with the silver gray Baroque pearls and some sterling silver. Do you have a pair of earrings that goes with that, Carol? Um, I will have. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly can make them if I don't have them right now in my stash. <laughs> yes, I have labradorite earrings, but I, I do have these pearls and I can make some earrings to, to coordinate with that. That's a gorgeous piece. You could, you can also wear it. I've got the tag on, but you can double it. It's a little, oh, not for me. You know what? I can also make it longer because that's not going to work for me. It's more like a dog collar. <laughs> <laughs> I made it a little bit shorter so it wasn't too long, but I could make it longer if you wanted to be able to double it. Well, I've learned a lot today about pearls. I wonder if anybody out there has any questions about them. I know. I'd love some questions. Yes. Anybody? Wow. I, I only have one other thing to talk about, about <laughs> how to value pearls. So any other questions? Okay, so think of a question, how to care for them. Um, if you have some pearls of your grandmother's in your jewelry box, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. The last thing I want you to think about, though, is color. Uh, color does matter. And the rarest and the most valuable color any, any, anyone know? Does anyone know what the most valuable color is? Come on, guys. I think they're thinking. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody? I hope I have them in my jewelry box. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you. Pure white is the rarest color. It's the hardest to get. Most of the white pearls you see are going to be a little bit creamy. So you want to, you want to look at that when you're valuing your pearls. Um, other colors come naturally. This silver gray that I showed you is natural. These taupe pearls that I was showing you earlier were natural. Um, when you start getting into the bright pinks and you know navy blue and, and colors that you wouldn't normally see in nature, those are going to be dyed pearls. And one thing about dyed pearls is they're usually not the best quality pearls and that's why they can dye them um, and use them in fashion jewelry. Um, if I have some, I do have some pearls that are dyed but I also make sure that they're very lustrous before I buy them. We have a question asking if Avril guessed black was the most popular ah, color hi, Avril. or valuable, <laughs> or, and she is asking, best way to store pearls. Ah, okay, thanks Avril, I appreciate that. So pearls can get scratched. You wanna be careful when you're traveling with them and when you're storing them. So the best thing to do is to have them in maybe a piece of felt or a piece of cloth and wrap them before you put them in a jewelry box. Um, you should lay them down because any of your jewelry, especially pearls that are knotted, if you hang them, then eventually, you know, over time, they're going to pull and they're going to stretch. So lay down with some fabric or felt around them, not bumping into other pearls. That's the best way. Yes. Um, okay, so we talked about the five things, luster, skin surface, size, shape, and color, all important. Um, you can have naturally pink pearls and you can have naturally taupe pearls. And if they're naturally colored, they're much more valuable than a dyed pearl. And I think we could all figure that one out. So go, go in your jewelry box and look and see what you have. One thing is if you, you probably have a strand of pearls that was given to you by your mom, your grandma, you know, somebody else's pearls and you don't wear them, you should really consider having them reworked. I do that. I love doing custom pieces like that. Uh, where you can actually, I can make them a little more modern for you and then you'll, you'll wear them and you'll get to enjoy them. Pearls want to be worn. They dry out and they lose their luster if you don't wear them. So you do want to wear your pearls. Let's look at some of the earrings I have in my collection. I'm going to bring them over here, Sandy. Maybe you could just do a quick scan. So I didn't talk, I'll, while we're looking at the earrings, um, I'm going to talk about Tahitian pearls because I've started working with them in the, this collection and I absolutely adore them. <laughs> and um, if you don't mind just zooming over to these right here. So these two pairs are similar. I just used gold versus silver in one, but I loved how I got the two pearls at the top that have that kind of peacocky blue green 
uh, luster and, and color, and then the gray are at the bottom. You know, Tahitian pearls come in different colors. They can be yellow, they can be um, white, they can be gray, dark gray, light gray. Um, and I love the ones that have the iridescence again in the, the blue gray color or the blue green colors. So again, same with Tahitian pearls. You wanna look for luster, you want to look for color, you wanna look at size, shape, all of those things. You can get Baroque Tahitian pearls as well. The ones I have, they actually are Baroque, but they're, they're much more round than they are odd shaped. But they're very valuable. It takes you know, longer to grow the Tahitian pearls. There just aren't as many in the market. Um, and that's, that's where your value comes in, but also in luster and color. They're just really, really beautiful. I'm gonna see if I can get my necklace off and put a different one on so you can see this strand, this double strand that I have. I just put it on the website. And uh, kind of be sad to see it go, but I'm sure I can make another one for myself. <laughs> So any questions about Tahitian or South Sea pearls? You know, most of the pearls today, I'd say 99.9% .9 of the pearls that you're going to buy are, um, well, they're not man-made, but they, um, they have, so some intervention with man. They're not natural. A natural pearl would be nearly impossible to find, to buy. And if you did find it, it would be outrageously expensive and well worth it because the natural pearl is actually one that's discovered you know, in the ocean or in the lake, and you have to, divers have to go down and dive and grab the mollusks and bring them out of the water and hope that there's a pearl inside. All of the other pearls are farmed. They're still they're still natural. You know, they're real pearls. It's just that we have gone in and put in some kind of irritant to start the pearl process, and then the oyster or the mollusk creates the pearl. One of the things that gives pearls their colors is the type of oyster or mollusk that actually um, makes the the pearl. So the, um, the mollusk, I can't think of a name, it's a Latin name, but it's a huge mollusk. It's, you know, it's really, really big um, that creates the Tahitian pearls. And they, have, they just have something in their mantle tissue and th that creates a nacre that is so beautiful and lustrous and colorful. So any questions about pearls or pearl earrings? Maybe we can do a little scan over here, Miss Sandy. Oh, here's another um, beautiful, just, very classic, kind of elegant piece. I don't know, does that show, Sandy? Can um, you just add it on to what you're oh, wearing, maybe? Yes, of course. And I must say that necklace, the first one you put on, is just amazing in person. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I, I would just feel so dressed up with that on, or even just a white shirt and a pair of faded jeans. It is absolutely gorgeous. And now that you added the other one, it is just, I, I love these two together. Wow. I just thanks. have to say. They could be yours. And it's on one of my favorite chains that you use. These. <laughs> Isn't that the black chain with the gold yes. accents? Yes. Black oxidized silver. And I also did a bracelet. I've done a couple of these bracelets. Uh, it's got the little Tahitian pearl at the clasp. And then it's got this toggle. And the toggle and the pearl actually hang in the front. So it's different, right? The closure is in the front and not in the back. Isn't that pretty? Wow. And then I've got this one, which is a necklace or a bracelet. It's a triple wrap uh, bracelet, but I did it with Tahitian pearls too. Let me grab that and uh, show you. Did it with the oxidized silver. I think the oxidized silver just makes it a little more, I don't know, young, hip, modern, cool. Uh, the gold is a little more elegant, and that's that's great as well. Here's the, uh, isn't that gorgeous? Just, I just, oh. <laughs> wow. I mean, I could just stare at these pearls all day. I don't know about you guys out there, but I love well, Tahitian I think pearls. they need to just come in person and shop the go. closet. <laughs> yeah. Gorgeous. That's right. Those of you in Houston, you can actually come and shop my closet if you want and see everything in person. But I hope that these um, videos are going to be good to if you can't be here in person, at least it feels a little bit more like in person. You can see the jewelry on. And if there's anything you want me to try on right now, I'd be happy to do it so you can see how it lays. Um, Sandy's going to take a little scan. Here's a long piece of some of these pieces here. But these are all, uh, these are all on the website. So go take a look. I've tried to mix it up. I, I, I don't want to be like everybody else. I want to have pieces that are different, um, but you know, some are more classic maybe than others and some are very modern. And like, I love, love these by the way. 
just gonna pop these on Sandy while you're scanning. Now these are not Tahitian pearls that I'm putting on right now. Sandy's gonna pop over here. here maybe I should do it here, huh? Beautiful. So these are just freshwater, not just, but they're freshwater pearls. They're stretchy, which is kind of fun. And you might be able to tell the difference between the Tahitian and those, but they're very similar in color um, and in feel. Again, seeing them in person is so impressive, and your excitement over pearls is <laughs> contagious. I love pearls. I love pearls. Yeah, they're not for. They're not like old <laughs> things. Like, I used to always think you have to be an old lady to wear a strand of pearls when I was younger. <laughs> now that I'm that old lady, uh, I don't think that's the case. Uh, pearls. Everybody can wear pearls now, and we've got some really fun, fun designs here. Yeah, look at this one. This is that um, bracelet slash necklace. Very simple to wear. Nice layering piece. Gorgeous. All right. All right. So everybody, make sure you've given me your email address because without it, I can't send you the pearls if you win them. Everybody who was here today, if I get your email address, I will pick a name and it will be all, you know, all legit. I'll put them in a little bowl, pick a name, and then I'll announce the winner next Friday at my next Shop the Closet. Um, and I'll let you guys know by email who wins. And if you sign up for my newsletter, I promise I don't put a lot of stuff in your box throughout the year. Um, I'm usually busy making jewelry and not sending out emails, but every now and then I, I send out a newsletter just to let you know what I'm doing, where I'm at, where my trunk shows are. Hopefully this year we'll have some trunk shows, right? And, um, and answer any questions you have. Maybe pop in some videos. Sandy and I have been doing some fun videos and, um, and you know, a couple times a year I'll send you that, or maybe a promotion that I'm doing, but only people on my email list will get the promotion. So please go ahead and sign up. You can always unsubscribe if you find out that it's not something you want. But anyway, I want to thank everybody for coming. If there's any more questions, we have just a few more moments. I'll be happy to answer them. If you think of questions later, you can always email me. I'm, I'm happy to talk to you about pearls or any other jewelry that you want to talk about. Actually, anything else you want to talk about. Just give me a call. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for joining. Bye.